hospitalized woman said to me, I'm afraid to sleep at night. Why? The doctors won't tell me, but I know I'm dying. She was right. She was dying, and the doctors had not yet told her. But she knew. It was her knowledge that she would die soon that made her afraid to sleep. Sleeping required a lack of fear and a willingness to let go that she did not yet have. Going to sleep is certainly a risk. While I'm unconscious, the world continues on its course. All sorts of things happen, and I neither know nor control them. I'm even personally vulnerable. Closing my eyes for a nap or a night is an almost foolhardy act of daring. The night prayer of the church recognizes the connection between sleep and death. Our night prayers are meant to be a preparation both for dropping off to sleep and for death when we will have to let go of everything. Every night, the prayer ends with the wish, may the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful death. We're supposed to close our eyes at night as if we were practicing to die. We need a faith that can sleep. We don't often think of faith as something to sleep about. Prayer, action, study, reflection, proclamation, that's what we think faith means. Doing nothing, sleeping, is that faith too? In the gospel, the disciples are all very busy. There is a terrific storm raging. They are awake in a nightmare, doing all the things required to prevent their boat swamping and their drowning. Meanwhile, Jesus is asleep. Finally, the disciples can bear it no longer. They wake Jesus and give him one of the few bawlings out he receives from the disciples. Teacher, doesn't it matter to you that we are going to drown? They're literally all in the same boat. If the disciples fail in their efforts to keep it afloat, they and Jesus will drown. No wonder they're upset with him for sleeping while they're busy panicking. They're facing death, and he's snoring. Why was that? An obvious answer is that he must have been exhausted. But that's not answer enough. Perhaps the disciples were right, and he just didn't care. After all, they would all die sooner or later anyway, so what's the fuss? Maybe he was just so fed up with the disciples and frustrated with his own mission that he just wished it would all go away. Maybe he was sleeping as a means of escape. Or maybe Jesus had a sleeper's faith. Perhaps his trust in God was such that he was able to let go, to relinquish control over his life and events and leave it all to God. He could take the risk of going to sleep, a sound enough sleep to be undisturbed by a raging storm because he knew that God was on watch. Jesus could sleep because he knew that God does not sleep. He could afford to let go, to let the world move along because he knew it will never move beyond the loving care of God. Even in a storm, even in his sleep of death on the cross, Jesus knew that God's watchful care is present. The same is true for me. When I'm asleep, I am no less embraced by God's love than when I am awake. Does that mean that while I sleep, there will be no storms, there will be no monsters hiding under my bed? Of course not. There will be. Faith does not scare away the nightmares. It makes us confident that the worst they can do to us will not overcome God's love. That's true as well for the biggest nightmare of them all death. So, each night we prepare ourselves to sleep by recalling our day, by reminding ourselves that God will bring our efforts to fruition, and by making the big act of faith, we close our eyes.